So before we go down some random tangent and f completely forget to do what we're supposed to do at the start, um, I guess sure. briefly introduce who you are and the project you work on. Sure. So I am um, just a Go developer. I, I guess I can call myself that because I've done primarily Go for the last eight years or <laughs> so professionally. I actually recently um, left my last job and I don't really have anything kind of happening right now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm able to focus on this side project that we're talking about full time at the moment. Um, and it's basically kind of my response to finding some things to do with NeoVim not ideal for me. Um, and I've just kind of always been interested in editors. So anyway, so sorry, the project is is um, the Lily editor. It's basically a, I guess you could refer to it as kind of a NeoVim alternative. It's not currently in that state, but it, that's that's kind of the plan. So. Um, Basically, kind of everything included, batteries, you know, batteries included stuff, no plugins required for like basic modern functionality you'd expect. Mm. Um, it's essentially, I would kind of, if you want like a short tagline, it's basically Helix, but for Vim Motions as the fast car citizen rather than Cocoon mm -hmm. um, Motions, because I feel like I find that like I prefer the Vim Motion philosophy, especially as, as well as my like personal style of working with different computers and mm -hmm. platforms and things. I like having a, a, a portable, um, Kind of motion set that I can go anywhere with, rather mm -hmm. than trying to mentally switch every time I'm on a machine that doesn't have some cocoon editor base, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean that's Which is far that's more likely the... than not. Like in in most cases, you're gonna have yeah, something yeah, definitely. Vim vibe. Yeah, server, yeah, yeah. Like, if I'm gonna be like restricted on permissions or something, or if I'm gonna be installing, I don't really want to have to be the first thing I install to be an editor I can actually use, or at yeah. least like. And even if I even if I can't do that, you know, yes, I could just switch back to the emotions. But then again, could I really? Because you know how the whole point of it, in my mind, is that it's supposed to be something you don't think about. It's intuitive. Mm. It's fast, right? That's part of the speed. You just kind of you don't think about it. So having to switch motion types, that's by definition gonna, you know, that's gonna get in the way. You think about it. So it just seems a bit silly to me to to, to restrict yourself in that sense if you mm. don't need to. But uh, yeah, I mean, I I think. My frustration with it was just that um, inexplicably, I was finding that, like, for various different reasons, and some reasons I don't even understand still, NeoVim would just suddenly inexplicably break for me um, mm -hmm. the configuration set specifically. So let's say if I, and I sent you that clip the other day, didn't I? Um, uh, kind yeah. Of, was, I was trying to show you how on one of my machines, NeoVim performs fairly poorly compared to what you'd expect, and then. I didn't even get that far because all I did was just start NeoVim. I hadn't run it for a few weeks on that machine. And then just suddenly the, the none of the NSP was loaded and, and the configuration seemed to break. And then I, I tried doing the uh, the Packer update. Then I was told that Packer was deprecated. And I was like, oh, brilliant. And then um, a bunch of the configurations that rely on, sorry, the, the plugins themselves, some of the plugin dependencies were deprecated as well. And it's just it just feels like an annoying spaghetti mess that I don't really want to have to deal with, especially if I'm just quickly opening my laptop to just quickly do something. Um, I don't want to have to spend the next half an hour fixing my configuration every time. Right. And I, I think I was I was starting to feel like it's not normally a problem for people, probably because I, I get the sense that you're not really supposed to just want to sit on one set of configurations forever. Mm. Um, I think the whole ecosystem kind of assumes that you, you're going to flow and flux and change things as, as you go. Um, whereas I kind of found that actually... I really liked the, the configuration I had, and it felt like a solid base to just work from. Mm -hmm. um, it has everything I need and nothing I don't. But the ecosystem it's built on is is seemingly fragile from my experience. So anyway, all that to say, I, I guess I kind of, you know, I've been thinking about editors for a long time. I just kind of always never really felt like I was at home mm. with my configurations constantly breaking. And then I, I just kind of felt like, well, you know, there's, I looked around, and I like running my editors in the terminal for various reasons. Um, mm. And there, there didn't seem to be, from what I could tell, any alternative to actual like Vim Motion first editors in the terminal mm -hmm. that came with everything you needed as like a basic experience. Um, and and one of the complaints I hear often, and and even the things people make fun of of NeoVim is often the configuration thing. You you know mm -hmm. it's useless out of the box. You have to configure it. Right, really it's good. kind of the point. Also, the kind of the main downside in a way. At the same time, it's, it's it's main benefit and main weakness. I think is is that that core nexus thing. Mm. Um, and and yeah, there is the Helix option. But again, as I kind of clarified, I I don't feel personally like it's a good 
alternative. I mean, yes, I like the fact it comes with everything out of the box mm -hmm. um, that you would probably need ever, I suppose. But I mean, it doesn't feel worth the, the, the having to having to learn the other motions. Just kind of feels like a, right. a non-optional thing to, you have to do. Right, um, like once you're already comfortable using also... Vim motions, it like that's already taken you so long to get there. It's if you go yeah, to some exactly. other system, it's like you're sort of going right back to the start. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's like so. I'm only I'm only learning this motion set because I want to use an editor that doesn't require configuration. Okay, mm. but now I'm having to lose all of the initial intuitive sense I had on the original motion set I was using. Mm -hmm. I don't personally subscribe very well to the Cocoon set. You know, like some people are diehard Cocoon fans. That's cool. Whatever. Mm. Um, you prefer that motion set? No, nice for you. But I mean, it kind of feels like you're you've got no option but to learn that if you want to. You know, so the, the choice is use NeoVim and deal with the configuration pain, or use Helix and don't have configuration pain, but also be forced to learn a different kind of philosophy of working. Mm -hmm. um, and correct me if I'm wrong, anyone, but I mean, from what I can tell, until I started making my editor, at least as far as I could find, there doesn't seem to be kind of, yeah, as I said, Helix, but for BIMMotion. I think there's probably a good reason for that. I mean, if you look around, you know a little bit that there are bundles and configurations that people provide as individual projects. Right, mm, there's mm. like Lazy Vim, and there's a few others. Um, I find that idea kind of almost offensive, because <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like using a game engine, but ah. for, for like a <laughs> I don't know, like, like it defeats the point in my opinion. Right, right? the fact it's on Vim is is a historical accident, mm. really. Like the fact that you're you know, you've created this configuration model because you can see in the community that there are people struggling to deal with configurations themselves in NeoVim. Mm -hmm. And so the, you know, the solution that you came up with was, okay, well, I'll just create a whole set of configurations then. And I guess there's a few things with that that I don't like. So first off, it, it yeah, as I said, it defeats the point. I feel mm -hmm. like, again, NeoVim's greatest strength in, in a way is the fact that you can configure it to do exactly what you want it to do. Right. However, yeah. if you're... You know, you're still a let's say you're like a novice user of NeoVim mm -hmm. and you've decided to download a bundle configuration to try and get around the fact you don't know what you're doing. Um, things still break sometimes. Like mm -hmm. sometimes the configuration, you know, like a plugin will become deprecated before the the bundle author has a time to respond or realize. Mm -hmm. Um you're also having to rely on not just NeoVim's like, you know, development cycle and people making work there, but also now you're also having to rely on this person maintaining this configuration bundle for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um People don't really know what's going on, and you don't really know what's happening or why. Um, if things do break, you, you're unlikely probably to know how to fix it. Um, mm -hmm. And if you do, then I, I guess why are you using the configuration bundle? Um, and it's and it's also slower than it needs to be. I know that I know that Neovim has the lower JIT, which makes mm -hmm. things like nice and stuff. But um, but again, I I mean even my personal configuration I had going, we can we can touch touch on this later, I suppose. But um, sometimes it, that's that's still too slow for me, yeah. um, based on what you know, machines I'm using. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I and the reason I sound like I'm trying to defend myself <laughs> is because <laughs> I because I feel like that's often the response I get. It, right, is people, right, right, right. It started to change a bit more recently, I think. But I mean, I think people get this all the time. I know, I know. I've heard, I've heard of people like Jonathan Blow with the Jai language and different things. They often one of the main complaints they have from people talking to them in the community is is they often rather than even bothering to like. Just say, oh, that's cool, you know, whatever, good, good for you. It's kind of like almost, I don't know if you've had this. I don't, I don't drink alcohol. This is completely off topic. Sure. Um, it's a very similar parallel to that. Like, mm. if you, if you, you know, I've, I, I'm very uncomfortable when I get, I, I'm not at home when I go to like places, you know, pubs and, and social drinking and things. <laughs> um, it's a similar experience I have there. Like, if you. You know, if I've had to go to an after work thing because someone's leaving and I feel like you know obligated to go, right? Um, inevitably, you know, you ask to go get people's drinks and I have no idea what the hell they're on about. IPA, what? Um, my, my, my guy in in tribal dress on the bottle, what? I don't understand what's going on. And and you you like you, it's very quick that, for them to realise that you don't have any idea what's going on. You're not at home there. You don't drink. And then they kind of ask you, well, why aren't you? You know, why are you just drinking Pepsi Max? Hmm. Shouldn't you be like having? And I'm like, I don't drink. And then it's like a what? Like a visceral. It's so bizarre. It's mm. like a. It's it's like your choice to not subscribe to something mm -hmm. rather than just blindly going for it is almost like you're offending them or you're like directly attacking them or something for their mm -hmm. interest. Is I would say it's a similar thing when when people find out you're you're not daring. You're daring to do something that's like 
reinventing the wheels, what they refer to it as. Mm. And in my opinion, is that I think I've, I've I kind of come up with this idea about I don't think you can reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. um, not really. I, I think that I think if anything, we all create our own wheels. And in my opinion, the more options of anything, the better. <clears throat> Generally speaking, I mean, obviously there is optional paralysis or whatever the hell the phrase is. But, um, choice paralysis? Um, that one. Yeah, I think so. Like, if you go to the shop and you want to buy one pack of cereal and there's like 12 different options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think, oh, like, what, what's the texture going to be like? What's the taste going to be like? Oh, no, it's too much sugar. It's not enough sugar or something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's the fault of the people doing the product offerings. I feel like that's, that's inevitable. I feel like if there's going to be any choice, you're going to have to make that choice. So mm -hmm. I think the better option is to rather restrict people in any way. If you feel like there's a gap or that there's something that needs to be addressed or done again, you know, like for example, a great example is Rip Rip. rip uh, sorry, what? Um, <laughs> rip Rip Rip. Rip Rip. Um, rip, rip yes, yeah, sorry, I mixed up the I and the E there. Um, you know, I'm sure the person that started making that was was told, you know, what the hell are you doing? Why oh, are you to do this again? Okay. No question. Um, and and yet now everyone uses it, right? Mm. Especially the people in the NeoVim space, which is the only reason I knew about it in the first place. It was the I think it's one of the base. Um, as you find a kind of options for for telescope or something, mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like it's it's a relevant question, really. It's like, why are you doing this? Well, why why do you care? Really, is should be the response. It's, mm -hmm. it's not your time. Why are you so offended by that concept? Is it because you would have done it if you weren't so scared? Is is it that you you find it offensive that someone else has got a different idea to you, or that you know? I in my opinion, again, I think that the more choice in this space, the better. Mm -hmm. I think the more languages we have, the better. I think the more tools that we have, the better. I think everyone, if they have the... In, in an ideal world, if everyone could program, or if everyone that could program had the time, I actually think that every single program that's ever been written should probably be written again by someone. Mm. Um, and not just because... like Obviously, if they're going to make it exactly the same, work, the same way, it's probably a, a, like a, 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 like a no-op, like it's something to help, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that, you know, it, it's it's... It's, it's demonstrably a good idea because things change and things evolve, problems evolve, people change. Yeah, everybody um, has different sort of issues they run into with, with software. And if you know how to write code, like you can address those problems, even if that means rebuilding the tool from the ground up, just specifically to deal with the one issue you have.